Hi everybody, this is Daniel with Half End Tech Support. Today we're going to go over how to make a shared calendar within Teams. Now using a shared calendar within Teams is a great way to stay in touch with each team member here and see if your calendar lines up, make scheduled time, see what's going on for them. This is an example of one that I've already made called Tech Support Calendar. I know, pretty basic name, but it works. So, great way to go. Pretty simple here. And this we can apply to any teams that we see here, from Corn Festival to Ancestral Wound, Postpartum Care, Cultural Education, Harvest of All First Nations, etc. So first things first, you're gonna wanna be in Teams. Now you can either be on the desktop version of Teams, like that, or you can be on the app version of Teams, like that. For today, I'm just going to be here within like the desktop. Keep it simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to be here in the channel that I want to create this in. So this is going to be in tech support in general. You can see post, files, tech support, tech support calendar. We're going to go to files here, go all the way over to the right, to the three little dots here, to this ellipsis, and hit open in SharePoint. It's going to take us to the SharePoint site. Now, this is the site that backs up everything that takes place on Teams for tech support. And also is the same site that then takes all the backups for Harvest of All First Nations Corn Festival, admin, so on and so forth. So once we're here, I'm gonna go ahead and hit home. Perfect. Gonna hit new, drop down, and hit app. Now you see here popular apps within the SharePoint site. It's pretty good stuff. Since this is the newest version of it, we're going to want to just go into the classic experience here. As you see, it says, if you're looking for a built-in apps such as custom lists, document, library, calendar, and others, then check them out in classic experience. So we're going to click on that. And then as this pops up, the app that we want is going to be calendar. Click on calendar says that it's working on it. Awesome. I'm going to just name this calendar tests. Tested. Perfect. Create. So notice here that within the tech support SharePoint site, it's going to take us into the site contents. So see calendar test. Perfect. That's what we want. We're going to go ahead and click it. Gives it a little bit of time to load up. Now within this, you can see some different events, if there's anything else going on, the calendar. See the different view from month to the week to the day, whatever, which way works best for you. And then what we're gonna do is copy and paste this URL. First, go ahead and copy. You're going to go back into your SharePoint. Once here, or excuse me, once uh, back into your Microsoft Teams. Once in Microsoft Teams, we're going to go ahead and go over here to this Add New tab. Give it a second while it loads. Within this Add New tab, we're going to go ahead and click on Website. Gonna name it calendar test. Excellent. And then we will paste that URL right there. Now with this, it says to post in the channel about this tab. That's always good to be able to keep in touch with everybody that you just made a new calendar. So then people can start seeing what's going on. If you're an owner of the uh, specific site, then you can go ahead and start adding things into that calendar and adjust them as needed. So go ahead and hit save. Perfect. Notice here, 
that instantly, right, it created a new tab that created that calendar test tab. We already have the test, uh, the tech support calendar, tech support, files, posts, perfect. Here's the calendar test. Now, in order to have this sync up with our Outlook calendar, we're going to go back into the SharePoint site here where it says the scope, expand, manage views, tags and notes, share and track, connect and export. We're going to go ahead to this connect and export and hit connect to Outlook. Hit yes, open an Outlook. Perfect. Yep, that's what we want. And then boom. Awesome. So then this is already there up and running. You could see that it's it populates instantly. You could see tech support calendar is already up. Here's uh, environmental justice calendar. But here's everything that's going on. Say I want to make a reoccurring event happen in the test calendar, like test. And then choose a random time here. Of course, for you, it won't be random. It'll be something specific and what makes sense to you. Say I want to make it reoccurring. Click on reoccur. And I want to make it daily. Let's do every day. And let's do end after 61 days. Perfect. Hit OK. Save and close. And boom. Populates right there. Now we're going to go ahead and make sure that this actually populated within that Microsoft Teams. <coughs> Excuse me. So here, it's going to step out of that and then click on it again. Give it some time to repopulate. Perfect. That's exactly what it says. And so you can do this, replicate the same thing within any teams that we have here just by following these simple instructions. Well, that's it for me for today. So thank you so much for your time and attention. As always, this is Daniel with Half and Tech Support, logging off. <music>
and then I'm going to go ahead and include our half in logo as well. Downloads, image for a half in logo. Boom. It's pretty big. I'm going to go ahead and resize that. Normally you shouldn't have to resize it this way, but it's okay. Boom. So that's what we see, right? For this one, I'm going to go ahead and make it the first, first image over here for us. Just like that. Now, we can leave this as a static picture, or we can have it be a link directly to the Hafen website. I'll show you how to do it. So first thing here, I'm gonna go right click on this picture, on this image, and then go to insert link, those little dots things there. And I already have the Harvest of All First Nations kind of pulled up here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that URL, paste it, hit OK. Perfect. And then same thing, I'm going to right click for the Facebook one. On this, this is the little create a link, insert hyperlink icon. I'm going to go ahead here just because I like to be able to go directly to where I need to be instead of guessing. Copy that, paste, right click on the Instagram, insert a link. Let me make sure that I'm in the right one. There we go. Insert a link. I'm going to go back to our halfenco.org website. Takes me directly to our Instagram. Copy. Paste. Perfect. And then finally, our donate button. Same thing. Going to go into our Harvest of All First Nations website. Go to our donate. And then I'm going to copy and paste that URL right there. Paste. Great. And then let me make sure. Awesome. So I have made every image in here so far a link. If you just hover over it, you'll be able to see where it will take you. Now, if we want to kind of customize it a little bit more here, we could do like this. Maybe shrink this a little bit. And then maybe make this a little bit bigger. Just like that. Looks a little goofy, huh? Not sure why that part's not working for me anymore. But that's fine. It's going to make it a little bit bigger. There we go. That's the size that we want it. Make sure here as well. That's there. Perfect. So far, so good. My signature has my name, my title. Harvest of All First Nations, and my email. Great. Now let's say 
Awesome. Let's say I like it like that. I'm going to go ahead and just hit save. Perfect. I'm going to exit out of there, go to new email. I'm going to send myself an email. So this is what it looks like. Again, like I said, we can go ahead and play around with the size here. Uh, that's just going to really be your own preference on how you want it to set up. For these purposes, I'm just going to leave it as is just to make sure that these links work. So hi, this is signature test. Great. I'm going to send it to myself, to my Gmail account. Signature part two. Great, I'm gonna send it to myself. I'm gonna come over here again to my email. As you can see, I have already sent myself an email with the same information. That's okay. You can see what it looks like here with this setup. And then just make sure that it actually works and it's not giving us that crazy coding. Okay, so this is what it looks like so far here. And that's not giving us any crazy coding like how you saw all those different just gibberish right underneath this here. Let's see if it actually works. I'm going to go ahead and open a new tab. Remember, I made this a link to the website as well. Facebook, open a new tab. Instagram, open in a new tab. Donate now. Let's go ahead and open that in a new tab as well. Perfect. So let's see. Awesome. So from my email, this sent me over here. Let's see for that Facebook. Perfect. That also worked. I can see everything that's going on there. Look at the little baby. Got Harvest of All First Nations Instagram page. Perfect. Got it going on. That's what it's all about. And then the Harvest of All First Nations donate page as well. Boom. So everybody, donate all your monies. We will take it all. Thank you. Well, everybody, <laughs> that's it for now for creating the, your email signatures and making it so it doesn't have all of that crazy gibberish pop up on the bottom of your email. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. What's at me? Send me a message on Teams. Either which way is fine. Other than that, that's all I have for you for today. So this has been a pleasure. This is Daniel logging off for half an tech support. What's going on, everybody? This is Daniel with half an tech support. Today we're gonna go over some really cool features and resources that we have within Microsoft Teams here. So a really good way of being able to think of Microsoft Teams, you could think of it as like the messenger for Facebook, but this is Teams for Microsoft, where instead of having to send an email, then you can go ahead and just send a quick chat, and then that way, see what's going on and move forward like that as well. Furthermore, you can see all the different channels that are in within the organization. Now, depending on how much uh, permissions that you have within Hafen, you can see from the Corn Festival to Ancestral Womb Healing to Cultural Education, Harvest of All First Nations, Solidarity and Anti-Racism Learning Programs, Hafen Admin, Tech Support, Food Justice Sovereignty, Newsletter. You'll be able to see all these different channels if you can't see all these different channels, then you'll probably just be able to see what channel mainly persists to you, which is totally fine as well. So within here, we can go ahead and see different kinds of threads, communications going on. Okay, awesome. Looks like I posted a video yesterday about how to create a shared calendar within Teams. If you haven't checked it out, definitely check it out. This is what that calendar looks like. This is just one feature that we have within Teams. So then that way, anybody else who has access to tech support 
can view this calendar as well. And then they can add things as needed or also see if I'm available or if uh, someone else is available. When we can make this shared calendar within any channel here inside of our team. You can also see your own Outlook calendar that is synced up. Boom, just like that. Furthermore, with that, then we can go ahead and see some other cool things. Now, in the desktop version of Outlook, say I want to share this email that I got from Nora to my Teams, I can go ahead and do that. So I can go click up here to share Teams, and then I could share it to Technical Support General, and awesome, she received my email about the uh, email signature. Great, I can go ahead and include attachments if I want. Don't need to do all of that. I can just go ahead and share. Your email is on its way to Teams. Perfect. So I want to make sure that it actually happens. So I'm going to go over here back in Teams in the web version. Go to Teams. And I was right here in tech support. Go to posts, and awesome. I can see clearly that email that I just shared within Teams. It's pretty awesome. That is a pretty new feature to Teams to be able to do that. I have noticed that if you're trying to do that within the web version of Outlook, it doesn't give you that option for whatever reason. Although you can easily do it within the desktop version of Outlook. If you don't know how to get to your desktop version of Outlook, then you can go to your little search bar down here. If this is a Windows machine, it might be a little bit different if it's a Mac. And then just type in Outlook and then open. And this is something that you should see. Awesome. So with that as well, we're able to see the different contacts, the people that are here as well. But let's go over here. Let's say, let's say we want to go to the calendar and we want to create a meeting right now. We can go ahead and do that. That's fine. Hit meet now and then go to click to share link. I can either share via email, just straightforward like this, or if I wanted to just copy and paste that and send it to an entire team, let's say the Solidarity Anti-Racism team, then I can go ahead put it in the conversation and send that entire meetings as well. Now with that, it does give you options when you are in a meeting to suppress the noise, which is really awesome. Um, so if you say you have like a, a bag of chips or something that you're eating, you can put it in your settings that will suppress the noise there. That way they don't have to hear all of that. It's pretty disrespectful, but it's a great way to still have everything that you need right at your fingertips. can go ahead and make other calls. If I needed to call somebody, that's fine. We can go ahead and do that. See all the different files. See the different admin uh, tasks and things like that as well. Permissions, tasks, everything else. It's very comprehensible. Everything that is going on within your Outlook account, as long as it's the same Outlook account that is signed in, with your Teams account, then it will be synced up. Pretty cool little thing there. Over here, so like let's say to-do list for me, Microsoft to-do. This is from my Outlook web version. And then you can see here that all my tasks have been taken care of, assigned to me. Let me see here, email corruption. We got that taken care of. Just 
go ahead and click it and take care of it that way. So it's a really quick, easy way to keep in contact with everybody. You can assign tasks to people as needed. I believe I had already made another, um, another video about that, but I'll just show you here real quick. So say this test, and then I'm going to go ahead and assign it to myself here. This is to my guest account, which is a Gmail account. And let's say super high, super important. Boom. Go ahead and do that. Then if I were to go and see in my Gmail account, then I should receive an email as well saying that I was assigned a task within the tech support channel that I have access to as a guest. And then I can go ahead and take that on and complete it. So perfect, that's taken care of there. Really great way to stay organized and keep in touch with everybody. And these are just some of the benefits here. If you want, you can add different kinds of apps to it, like Zoom, for instance. I believe I have already added Zoom to mine if needed. We can go ahead and do that too. If you like Zoom more than using the Teams um, video chat. So it's pretty awesome. A lot of great ways to make sure that everybody has accessibility to what is being presented. Well, I want to just thank you all for your time. That's all for now for the benefits of using Microsoft Teams. This is Daniel logging off for half end tech support. Hi everybody, Daniel here with half end tech support. So right now we're gonna go over how to make a new event that will then populate onto your Outlook calendar. Now as a quick note, by making a new event here that populates onto your calendar, it is more for tasks, meetings, things of that nature that take more than half an hour or at least a half hour. If you want to do a to-do list for yourself that doesn't take nearly that long just to complete one task, then I recommend coming over here, right-clicking to do, hit open a new tab, and then boom. As you can see, had some tasks that I had to do and got completed. If I wanted to say it wasn't complete, then I'd just unclick that or click that again. Perfect. Coming back over here to the new event that populates onto your calendar, you're going to want to come over here to the top, hit new event, make a title. I'm going to say this is just a test. Perfect. Now, if I want to have this be sent as an email to someone else, then I do need an attendee to be a part of it. If I don't, and it's just a personal task, then I don't have to invite anybody, um, and it will just populate onto my Outlook calendar, and you'll have little reminder messages that come up 15 minutes before the actual event. So in this case, let's say I want to tag Nora because we're going to speak, and then let's say, okay, Perfect, so I can see right here that she has preferences. She has times available for her. Uh, since this is just a test, I'm just gonna do it this way for tonight at nine o'clock to 9.30. If I wanted it to repeat, I can go down here and hit daily, weekly, monthly, yearly into custom and do a little bit more. If I wanted it to show up every other week or every three weeks or however it needed to be, then you can do that. I'm not going to have it be a repeating factor for this uh, showing. With that, it will automatically toggle this down here so that it will send a link to her. And in the description, if you want to add anything, feel free to. For this scenario, I'm just going to say this is a test.
And then as you can see, it has my email here and I can hit send. Boom. And what happens is on her side, she receives an email saying that she'll see this event here that says it is time to jump onto this meeting. Again, just now you saw that 15 minute timer show up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and delete this, cancel. I want to discard, I want to cancel it. Cancel event and notify attendee. This was just a test. That way she knows she doesn't have to worry about it. And that's how you do it. It automatically sends an email to her. If you wanted to send an email to both of you or to you yourself and who all is invited, then click that person's name and then go ahead and click on your own name. Then you will also receive that same email into the Outlook here. Other than that, it's pretty simple and straightforward. You're just able to jump on automatically. But again, you want to use that when it's a 30 minute meeting or task or something that you need allotted to take care of rather than just a quick five, 10 minute task. Five, 10 minute task, come over here to to do, and then you'll have your own little list that no one else will see. This one does not get populated onto your Outlook calendar. That way people can still schedule with you if they need to have a meeting or say that they wanna give you money for donations because Harvest of All First Nations is amazing. Well, that's all for now, everybody. Thank you for your time. Daniel, logging off. Hello, everyone. Daniel here with half End Tech Support. Right now, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to sync up your Google Calendar with your Outlook Calendar. It's pretty simple. First thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna be logged into your Google Calendar as well as your Outlook Calendar in two separate tabs. You're gonna start off in your Google Calendar here. Go down to whichever calendar that you want to upload. Click on the ellipsis, those three little dots hit settings and sharing. Afterwards, you're gonna scroll down here. You'll see all these different kinds of settings. You can go ahead and integrate calendar, click on it. It will automatically scroll you down. You're gonna see here secret address in iCal format. That's the one you want. Go ahead and copy to clipboard. Don't worry, that warning always shows up. That's perfectly fine. Just hit okay. It will copy that link. Then we're going to move into our Outlook calendar. In our Outlook calendar, over here on the left-hand side, we're going to see Add Calendar. Click there. See some different options, Add from Directory, Subscribe from Web, Upload from File. Go ahead and click Subscribe from Web. Paste your link that you got from your Google Calendar and name your calendar, whatever it is that you want. I like to use things that make sense to me. So for me, it would be like Daniel's calendar. It's like that. If I wanted to, I can go ahead and change the color on it. I don't know, yellow, brown, green, whatever I want. And then come down here and hit import. Now, since I've already imported my Google Calendar onto my Outlook, I'm not gonna do it again. So I'm just gonna go ahead and discard it. I'll show you what it looks like though. So with my Google Calendar already being on here, you'll see that it is in like this light purple color and my Outlook calendar colors are in blue. If I don't want to see my other Gmail calendar, then I can just unclick it and it won't show up. If I wanna see it, I can do that. If I wanna see other people's calendars as well to see if they're really busy, then Boom, just like that. If I don't wanna see it, I can just go ahead and unclick it, no worries. One other thing though I did wanna show you with this is that when we come over here to our Teams, then we go into the calendar for Teams, 
So that's the team's channel. Come over here to the calendar. Just know that it will only show your Outlook calendar. It doesn't show the integrated calendars that you have with it already, like the Google, Yahoo, whatever it is for you. So it's just going to show you what you have on your Outlook. That's just the way that Microsoft is with that. But other than that, it's pretty simple and straight to the point. It's a great way to kind of keep in contact, see what's going on with the rest of the group. Say, I want to be able to meet with Yolo. And I'm like, okay, well, I can see that she has some time, some time next year to meet. <laughs> so it's a great resource, great tool that we have here to be able to stay connected with each other. And if y'all have any questions, feel free to reach out to me directly, preferably via Teams. Uh, I would strongly suggest everybody to download Teams onto your phones as well. Uh, if not, then WhatsApp is okay, but I would prefer Teams. That way everything is all in one place. Other than that, thank you for your time. Daniel, logging off.